Ooh. Nice. What's going on, y'all? My name is Spice. This is Spice Camp Fish. And if y'all have seen the title of the video, you already know what's going on, but I'm just gonna tell you anyway. So I'm sure by now, if y'all have been on the internet for any period of time, watched any sort of YouTube fishing video style thing, y'all have seen those subscription boxes. And for the most part, I don't really take stock in any of those. Uh, I used to subscribe to Mystery Tackle Box for a while. Uh, I thought it was okay. Usually I got a couple things in there that I wasn't 100% stoked about. They'll always say, oh, it's fantastic. Like, you want to go out and try new stuff. Like, try this, try that. Always grow as an angler. And yeah, definitely. But usually when I want to try something or I see something that I want to try, I just go out and buy it. But I came across this company uh, on Instagram, actually. It's called Bass Baits Monthly, in case you guys want to try it out. I'll leave a link down in the description for y'all as well. But they don't seem to do that. They don't seem to send you any of those weird, like, random knockoff, strange things that they want you to try. As far as I can tell, they just send you name brand stuff and really good stuff. So I figured, hey, you know what? May as well give it a try. I figured this would be a good way to stock up on some tackle and uh, save a little bit of money while I'm doing it. So like y'all saw in the description, we're gonna go through this box. Uh, I haven't opened it, I have no idea what's in here, but um, this is my first ever one. So I'm gonna go through it, tell y'all what I think about each of the lures, and then we're gonna go out to the pond and see if we can catch some fish on all of them. Before we get any further into today's video, I just wanna say thanks so much for clicking on it. If you do like the video, hit that subscribe button down below. I put up new videos every Monday and Friday, so if y'all wanna see some more content, that's gonna be the way to do it. On top of that, if you guys like the video, please hit that like button. Uh, it lets me know that you guys like the content, and it also helps more people see these videos. But yeah, I'm done talking, and I want to see what's inside this box, so we're just going to get into unboxing it. Alright, here we go. So, first up, I just want to talk about the box real quick. Um, they did a fantastic job with the actual design of this box. Uh, Y'all probably can't see that super well. That's actually a black and white picture of a bass. It's super sweet. Uh, it's just like a some dude holding a big old fat bass. Like, I freaking love that. Other than that, it's just a plain white. Uh, they got their big old bassbaitsmonthly.com. Go check them out. Again, link in the description. And they got like their little BBM logo, which I think they did a pretty sweet job on. I think that looks awesome. But anyway, let me find something to open this box up with. There we go. That should be it. Alright, here we go. Give it a smell. I don't smell anything, anything gross. That's a good sign. So this is pretty cool. They gave you a little card. Uh, it says, uh, follow us on Instagram, yada, yada, yada. Uh, give a friend code, promo20. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to sign up for this, you guys can use the code promo20 to save 20% off on your first month's box. Now, this ad just gives you a nice little... Uh, tutorial on how to tie a clinch knot in case you didn't know just the standard knot i'm actually gonna hang this up on the wall it's kind of cool but getting into the lures wow okay so they got some pretty sweet stuff in here so i'll get some close-up shots of everything for y'all just so you guys can get a little bit better uh view of it but uh we're gonna start off with just at the top starting off with this cotton cordell pencil popper so cotton cordell is uh, a really long standing brand they've been around forever uh, actually use their super spot I think it's called which is their lipless crankbait that they sell like every single Walmart uh, they're actually pretty good this looks like it came with some pretty nice hooks on it uh, as opposed to those liplesses which don't usually come with some nice hooks on them uh, it's a three-quarter ounce bait uh, four and a half inches long 11.05 centimeters with number two size hooks really interesting pattern on it it's just kind of like a uh, rainbow trout almost pattern green on the back got like a little pink stripe and then a white belly but all right next up we got a wow dp15 by cornerstone baits so this dives 12 to 15 feet it's a deep diving crankbait it's got a black back with a lighter red stripe and then the bottom seems to be just about completely clear and she's got like some little yellow accents as well on there but again dives 12 to 15 foot the actual color on this is ghost rv crawl i don't know who mentioned it but the color on this uh pencil popper was clear rainbow trout next up we got a jenko fishing rip knocker uh, i've actually used these before i've lost the one that i had but these are pretty sweet uh they're just like a uh, lipless crankbait 
but instead of having two hooks that are usually just affixed to it, this one is actually like a line three design, so it's similar to a line three swim bait. So when the fish gets it in its mouth, it can't use the weight of that swim bait to, or I guess in this case, the lipless to throw the hook. They also include a couple stickers in here. You got the Bass Baits Monthly sticker, as well as a Cornerstone Bait sticker, both pretty sweet. Love it when people put stickers in their boxes, cause I put them on my kayak. We got some hooks. These are four out Mustad Ultra Lock Worm Hooks. Just a nice little pack, full pack, five uh, in here. The Mustad hooks are super sharp. Uh, they're fantastic. I use Mustad a lot. Uh, big fan of it, but um, yeah, those are definitely gonna work on some soft plastics, which is the next thing we have up in the box. Holy shit. All right, hang on, gotta save that. First up, we got the Reaction Innovations Man Bear Pig, which is just kind of like a little uh, creature bait. So this is just like a watermelon red color, uh, just your pretty standard average uh, creature style bait, I guess. I don't really throw this style of lure very often, like a brush hog or anything, but uh, should be interesting. Definitely should get bit on these. I know uh, Tim, Tim or Matt over at Tactical Bass, I think it's Tim. He's a real big fan of these. I think they both are, but Tim especially is a big fan of these. So stoked that I got some of these and uh, I'm really excited to try them out. Next up, and this is uh, what I was saying, oh wow about, um, <laughs> we have these, wow, these are, these are pretty big. These are the Godfather Bait Company, Joe the Barber Shad. These are in blue shad color with standard flex and I guess a shad scent. But yeah, these things are freaking big. They are just a honking piece of plastic. So that should hopefully get a big bite. Um, we'll see. And last up in the box, we just have some classic, oh, these are not what I thought they were. Okay, uh, I thought these were just Senkos. These are actually their six and a half inch cut tail worm with a K. So instead of it being a Senko, it's more of a finesse worm style presentation with kind of like a diamond shaped tail really interesting this is just in a classic watermelon no flake color uh just your average watermelon looks good should definitely get bit all right y'all i'm gonna get some of this stuff tied up and ready for tomorrow morning and uh, i'll see y'all down at the pond all right y'all out here bright and early this morning I'm gonna see if i can't get on myself a couple fish get this challenge underway Originally, I came out here with the intent of being the first person at the spot, but uh, I am the sixth, which is kind of saying something considering it's 30 minutes before the sun comes up, so I don't know, I'll figure it out. The issue is, is that everybody's like right along with them, so it's there's two guys. Whew, this should be entertaining. I actually wear shoes today as opposed to flip-flops like I normally do while I'm walking around treacherous rocks, so hopefully I don't hurt myself. But yeah, so there's two people down this way to my right a little bit, and then to my left there's another two people, and then past them there's another person, and it looks like they're all just kind of chillaxing. I just saw something come up as well, so I'm going to try and get this show on the road. All right, so since it is super damn early, I figure we may as well start off with the top water. So I'm gonna go around that little, uh, what was it, the Cotton Cordell something? I don't know, that little Cotton Cordell spook bait. Chuck this around for a little bit, see if we can't get anything. I don't really think I'm in a very optimal spot to be throwing this. As far as I know, this is like one of the deepest holes in the whole lake right here when I'm fishing over. I was hoping to get a little bit closer to like that shelf or the ledge where it drops off, but again, there's three people to my left fishing it, so. Kind of just stuck here. All right, y'all, making a move. Uh, I started 
down on the other side of the pond or lake, reservoir, whatever you want to call it. Started all the way down there, had little to no success, but that's cool. I did see a couple of fish blow up, so that's pretty sweet. You know that they are still somewhat kind of sort of eating on top water, so they might possibly eat my lure. Saw some guy pull up some kind of fish, I don't know what it was. Like maybe a walleye or maybe a little smaller or something, but whatever it was, it went straight into a bucket. So I think I've left the whole crowd behind me. I think everybody's just kind of set up around that drop off, which is understandable. That's where I would want to set up. The nice thing is, is that we're at a lake and especially right now, since it's early in the morning, these fish could be just about anywhere. Especially if they're starting to get on their fall patterns. They're starting to feed up for, you know, fall time. They might be quite aggressive and quite hungry. In case y'all were curious, uh, I was going to film this video like a week ago. But uh, I didn't really have that much time between homework and school and other stuff and regular work. And on top of that, we got snow, so, you know. It's not the best uh, top water conditions if there's snow on the ground. Yeah, they're just not quite on that top water to this morning. Again, like I was saying, it freaking snowed here a couple days ago, so they might still be a little bit out of whack from that switch it up for a minute. The other lure that I would like to get knocked out here is this little cornerstone crank. It's just kind of like the deepest, clearest water that I know of. And also probably the most likely spot for there to be fish that would eat a deep diving crank. First cast and I'm already snagged. Fantastic. That's the problem with this place is that, I mean, y'all can see these rocks. This is pretty much what half the bottom looks like. So you really gotta be careful in throwing around cranks and stuff like that that you don't wanna get hung up. It feels like I'm stuck in someone's fishing line. Yep, I am. All right, oh, put that in my pocket, get rid of that later. If you guys ever see fishing line out and about while you're fishing or you get caught in it, don't just throw it back in the water. Clean that shit up. Anyway, back to cranking. Oh, there's a fish. Got a fish, 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 got a fish. Oh, it's fighting. It's fighting strong. Largy? Largemouth. Good one, too. <laughs> Freaking good one. Oh, my God. What? First fish of the day and it's a tank? Okay. All right. Dude. Freaking solid one for the first one of the day. Hells yeah, son. Dude, no way. This is nuts. Actually, I think I might have my scale on me. Let me see. Yeah, I do. Oh my god, yes. Alright, let me get a, a weight on this first one of the day, because this is a good one. <laughs> I'm not expecting this for my first fish of the day. Alright, zeroed out. Start the day off with a two. 62. I don't know if you guys can see that. This camera is kind of garbage and there's low light right now, but just over a two and a half pounder to start the morning off. No freaking complaints. All right, big girl. Thanks so much for biting. I appreciate you. Wow, this water's cold. Holy crap. No wonder they're not hitting top water. See ya. <laughs> Dude, yes. Oh my god. What a freaking sick first catch. That was. 
way better than anything that I was expecting to catch today. Dude. Yes! <laughs> All right. First bait knocked off. Cornerstone baits crank. Check. With a freaking fatty. Well, since they're kind of eating a crank, I may as well keep going on with that cranking vibe. Throwing a little lipless. It's that Jenko uh, rip knocker. See how she runs. All right, so that sun's coming up pretty quick. So what I'm gonna do is give this top water a little bit more time until it gets really high up there and top water's definitely not an option. And then we might slow it down, might try somewhere else. I don't know, we'll see, we'll figure it out. But one thing's for sure, and that is that I am getting this challenge done. I'm surprised. Usually I can get at least one to come up and at least smell my top water. Give it a little try. And they're blowing up on bait all over, like all around me. I don't know why they won't eat this thing. Don't do it, bird. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh. That bird about just went from a top water. Jeez, that could have been bad. I saw him square up with it. He was like, mm, that looks like food. I was like, mm -mm, not for you. <laughs> it's for the swimming ones. It's not for the flying ones. All right, I'm gonna head to another spot in just a minute, but I am curious about something. I wonder if they're just on that crank bite. I don't know why they would be. But, um, I don't know, maybe they're just not really in the mood to come up, but they'll, you know, go down for something. I wonder if they're just not interested in top water this morning. Maybe they just like that cranking vibration or whatever. So, I'm just going to give this a few more casts, see if I can't get on another fish, maybe. Well, there goes that. It was fun while it lasted, cornerstone crank. Oh, well, good thing we already caught a fish on that one, so we ain't out of the challenge yet. I think that's probably a good cue for me to pack up and go somewhere else, though. I was really feeling it at this spot after that first one, but I don't know. It might have just been a lucky fish. Just a, a lucky little two and a half pounder. All right, let me get all my stuff packed up and I'll meet y'all at the next spot. Later. All right, y'all, spot number two, just now pulling up. Y'all have seen this spot in a few videos. I'm down here with just these two lures, the lipless and that big old fluke. We're gonna see if we can make it happen. Water's definitely up since the last time I was here, so that's a good sign. Fish might be up a little bit more shallow. Gonna start off with this little lipless, see if we can't just get one real fast. My goal here is literally just to catch a fish on both of these lures and then we're good to go. And I can go somewhere else and get the soft plastics knocked out and and hopefully later tonight I can get out and get that top water. No way. First cast. I can't tell if that was a fish or not. I might have just been stuck on something. Hoping these fish will just be kind of out and about, nice and active. I'm trying to find some bait fish earlier in the morning.
All right, well, that's not good. Stuck on something. Oh no. Well, shoot. Broke off that little uh, lipless. That's not good. Means we can't complete the challenge anymore. Well, shoot. That is extremely unfortunate. Well, I guess I'll just throw this fluke around for a little bit, see if I can't pick up a fish on this. But, uh, that's not great. All right, y'all. We are out here. Back at the pond where I broke off that lipless with a new camera, rejuvenated attitude. We're gonna get ourselves a fish on this little fluke. Using it as the trailer for a chatterbait right now. I think that's probably gonna be my best bet of getting bit. I'm also out here fishing with Max. He's over here to my right a little bit. We're both kind of fishing the same area because I was gonna go fish over here, but some dudes are already over here, so I don't really have that option anymore. So we're just gonna try not to cross each other's lines as much as possible and see if we can't get some fish. I'm fairly confident I'm gonna be able to get one to eat this. It's just a little bit of a big presentation. It's the issue. These flukes are freaking massive. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I think they're like six inches, something like that. And uh, well, it's just a big honking piece of plastic is the thing. It just makes the uh, overall presentation of this chatterbait just a little bit long, but uh, I think we should still be able to make it work. Try out along this line or this dock, see if we can't get one. Nice little doinker, though. That's a great fish, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Pretty one. Pretty one. All right, fella. Later. Ooh. Hell yeah. Good job, dude. Dude. Yes. Mmm. The next day. All right, y'all. Day number four, five, six. I don't even know. I've lost track at this point. But uh, I've been throwing these lures around for just the past couple of days, I haven't been able to get anything on them. I've been really focusing on those soft plastics. I threw the craw on a Texas rig. I threw it on the back of a jig. Uh, I threw it on, you know, just like a swim jig, stuff like that. I've also been throwing that little uh, Yamamoto worm around on a Texas rig. I threw it on a shaky head. I threw it weightless. I threw it wacky rigged. I just couldn't get anything to bite them. But today we're out here at the pond the dreams are made of and I got those lures tied up. So we're gonna see if we can't make something bite them here. And if not, then I think I'm just going to have to call the video, but uh, hopefully we can finish it out strong. So I got that top water rigged up on a 7.4 Heavy. Uh, it's just got 50 pound braid on it. Should be pretty good for that. I got that man bear pig tied up on a chatterbait as a chatterbait trailer. I think that should do pretty well as well. Since we're fishing around grass, I think that could be a big player tonight. And then I got that hook that came in the box and we're going to be throwing one of those uh, Yamamoto worms on that as well but uh, those are the three lures we're working with and uh, hopefully we can make something happen but yeah i'm gonna get some stuff all ready and uh we're gonna see if we can get on some fish i'll get y'all strapped to my chest and let's try and finish this one out with a bang Oh, oh my God, I got one on the fall. <laughs> it's not a bad one either. <laughs> Dude, yeah, chatterbait. 
<laughs> oh man. Yes. <laughs> oh, finally. A fish. We did it, y'all. Got one on that man bear pig on the back of the chatterbait. Nice little pretty guy. He's really nicely colored. Nice, yeah, he is. That's yeah. Awesome. Nice looking little fella. All right. Hopefully I don't break my GoPro for this. I'm gonna try an underwater shot. Okay. I think I got it. I appreciate it though. Please don't break. No way. Got one. Yes. On the worm. Yeah. Yeah. The worm, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Awesome. A little bit nicer one. Not much to brag about, but still a good fish nonetheless. See ya, boss. Appreciate ya. All right, y'all, now just some last final thoughts on the uh, Bass Baits Monthly Box. So like I said, this was the first time I ever bought their subscription. I paid for this with my own money. They didn't send it to me, nothing like that. I just wanted to see what it would be like. I've used Mystery Tackle Box in the past, and my biggest problem with them is they always have like one or two weird like gimmicky baits in there that I always thought were kind of strange and never really worked, but we're just kind of there to, you know, fill in the box and make it look kind of interesting. But this box didn't do that. It didn't give me anything that was too outlandish or too weird or too interesting or difficult to work or anything like that. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get bit on that spook as well as the little lipless. But the lipless we broke off, I really do think I could have gotten bit on that, but I just broke it off too quick to actually, you know, fish it long enough to get bit. And then that spook, uh, I don't think it was anything wrong with the lure. I just think it's not really that time of year anymore. Like I said, this is the September box and uh, usually that would work out really well in September. There's usually fish schooling and feeding on top on bait. But here in Colorado, we have such weird weather that we don't really even have that much of a fall. It just kind of goes from summer fishing to winter fishing. And then there's like a week and a half, two weeks in the middle where it's just like really difficult to get on a consistent pattern. So unfortunately we couldn't get that spook done, but it was still a great lure. As for the other lures that came in the box, uh, they all worked out really well. The cornerstone baits crank, which we also broke off unfortunately, worked really well. I caught a fish in like two casts, I think. That lipless I've used before and I've caught a couple fish on it before. Not the trap line version, just the regular rip knocker. So I assume the trap line version would probably work just as well. Man bear pig isn't exactly something that I would throw all the time, but um, you know, they still work. I know, uh, I think it's Matt Allen from Tactical Bass and Soars by those things. He said that they're really great for flipping around. I just personally don't have a ton of confidence in like flipping around creatures and like brush hog style lures. I usually just stick with crawls and beavers and stuff. And then those Yamamoto worms, they definitely worked. I mean, they're not Senkos, but fish seem to like them nonetheless. But I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please do me a favor and leave a like on the video. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, it lets me know that you guys enjoy the content. On top of that, if you guys want to see some more content like this, I put up new videos every Monday and Friday, so hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any. I do mostly like bank fishing for largemouth bass, but uh, every once in a while I'll throw some kayak fishing in there as well. And, um, you know, I'll try and sprinkle in some other video ideas as the winter comes along and I can't really fish anymore. Also, leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you guys want to see another Bass Baits monthly video. I do think I'm going to be continuing my subscription with them. Again, I was pretty happy with the box. I do think I saved a little bit of money as well. I'll have uh, how much I spent on the box popping up right now. And then I took each of the lures and individually counted them out and, uh, you know, added up all the prices. So that's what you're seeing along the screen right now is the total of all the prices. So we did save a little bit of money, so I definitely consider that a win. And honestly, this box gives me all the great stuff that I loved about Mystery Tackle Box and none of the crappy products. 
instead of all those gimmicky, weird, Chinese, Japanese knockoff lures that they send and, you know, don't really work or you have to watch 15 YouTube videos to try and figure out how to use it, these guys just send you straight up great soft plastics that are known to work, known to catch fish, and um, as y'all can see, they definitely work for me. If I can catch fish on them, then I'm sure y'all can too. I really hope y'all enjoyed again. Check them and wreck them, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out. Peace.